All right. So I'll end up working backwards, but that's okay too. If you're going to go through and clean your slide, you'd start by taking this off, which is about as obvious as it gets. If you have to make a T slot, a T nut for the T slot, make sure you trim it off right in there so that nothing's sticking out up here. Because if you do, when you crank it down, it's going to drive into your slide rest. And uh, they don't typically come that way, so you buy it this length and you chop it down. That way you. Uh, it, it'll, it'll, it'll save stress, we'll put it that way, and it won't jam up on you. Then if they jam up, of course, you go get the vice grips and you grab it in the middle with the vice grips. And then next time your friend's over and sees you change it and you got vice grips marked on it, you can be proud. So, does everybody know how to make these slides swivel? Okay. There are two cams. There's a cam here, right there, and there's a cam right here. So you, your first inclination is to try to make it unscrew to the left like a screw, but somebody tightened it that way yesterday. So you go to the right. This one here is going to be uh, right here. And it's interesting, no matter how many times you tighten things, you'll occasionally do that. You'll just keep going, oh, man, it's not loosening up, and you're actually tightening it. So once that's done, I'm saying it's a cam. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. And uh, in a little bit, I will take it loose, and you'll see what it is. But. Okay, so if you try to take your top slide back. David? So is there anything wrong with leaving the one side snug and just operating with one? I mean, how many thousands off will that take so you don't snug both sides down? Is that an issue? Because it's easier just to leave the one side somewhat loose. Well, side well you tell me. You've been doing that. Has it been an issue? I'm asking you. I'm saying, have you ever had an issue with it? There's your answer, because you're doing very light cuts, you know. Um, in the old days, a lot of them only had one, so it is only holding on one side. Now you see, I came to the end here; it jammed up, right? Oh, so you can't clean back in here. Well, let's go ahead and take these cams out of here. And the cams have a keeper on them. The keeper is right here. And this is nothing more than a 1032 screw. Just simply taking it out of there. And you take the 730 seconds. And you can see, this is a cam. You see it? The uh, the front part here is a bearing. See, see th th this this is a straight shaft, and this is parallel to it. And in between, you see on this side, it's it's straight on that. But there's a step. It is cam shaped. See if we can see it. So that's how that works. That's why you can tighten it. There is no wrong directions for tightening a can, cam, but if you think in terms of a screw, it's natural to go the other way. Remember, sometimes you do unnatural things. Such as turning a screw the wrong direction. 
Let's say if you're reaching over the back of it, righty tighty loses all its meaning when you're looking over the back and down. Who would ever think that? Righty tighty, lefty loosey. All right. It's only if you're what? English. <laughs> That's righty too tidy. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? And all that rust in there, it's beautiful, isn't it? I don't think I've ever had this apart. That's what makes it so nice for this because I've never had it apart. And you can see how, this is a really, really clean one when I got it. It's about as clean as they get off of eBay. Put them in a bucket, you might need them. <laughs> I got a big, I got a bucket about three quarters full of those. You, you almost always need one at the bottom. There's a set screw down in here, okay? So, we'll run this out. On eBay, what do you think you can get one of those for? You can get one one day for 500 and it looks like a truck ran over it. You can get one for 2000 it looks like a truck ran over it. And you'll get it and it's not too bad. And then you'll get one that... Um, if they're pristine, they go very high. If you back this set screw up a little bit, It'll actually give you access, and I, you know, you can reach under there with an Allen wrench, or you can just do it that way. But now, we we'll pull this out, and see the groove there. That groove is the safety stop, and once in a while, you need to go past that so you can back that screw out. Some. You can gain another half or three quarters of an inch of travel, which you usually don't need in metal work, but in uh, ornamental turning, it's really, really handy. I forgot my oil can over there. Can somebody go grab my oil, oil can? I think it's underneath one of the blades. Oh, that's your protractor. Protractor. The um, protractor you view through the glass on the side. So in the process of taking this apart, can we see here? this back on here. This is the gib. Can you, this is the gib here on the inside. Thank you. Back here is a set screw. Right? And that you, you don't stick your wrench in very far, you see, just barely, because you stick it in farther, and there are two screws in there. So we got this loose. There's the gib. And the side that doesn't, look at the grit that's in there. There's, Bounty works way better. <laughs> Bounty. When, when the president's not throwing Bounty, we're using it. But um, I would prefer a cotton cloth, to tell you the truth, but I didn't have one, so. 
Now, now you uh, looks, like looks like what? You mean, you mean right in here? Yeah. Well, that's the good part. That's the good news right there. But it's not good news because see here. That's now this slide is actually in really, really, really good shape compared to what we get off of eBay most of the time. But so all this is worn here. This is the scraping. This is worn. And this one's worn fairly evenly, so we can use it. Now, right in the middle, right there, there are a few deep spots where the scraping isn't completely gone yet. But so originally I searched all scrape. Yep. Originally this beaver chewed surface was the entire thing and that was pretty good. Uh, like this. This is the back side where you don't see any action. That's, that's stationary. Do you grind the gill? When you rebuild it, you do, but I wouldn't recommend you grinding it. Well, you have all the equipment. You could try it, but... I, I don't want to. Yeah, you, yeah we, we do. See, these, see this notch here? What happens with that? Got to pull the set screws out. Dust shield first. Another screw for the bucket. What do you need a dust shield for anyway, right? Well, the best surface is a scrape surface that is extremely true. But unfortunately, we don't often get that. Well, when you finish, you scrape it, right? What's that? When you're rebuilding, you scrape it. Right? Yeah, I'm not giving you a lecture on rebuilding, though. I'm giving you a lecture on, um, I'm trying to show you a shop maintenance. This slide has seen very, very, very little action in my shop, and it needs to be torn. Has it is in need of being torn apart before we do much with it. But it was serving a purpose in the meantime, so we let it go. Okay, now set screws. Most of your set screws don't go all the way through like that, and that is why you just reach in a little bit, catch the first one, loosen it, reach into the second one. Okay, now here's why you have two the, the two grooves in here. Two grooves, right? These two set screws sit like this. They usually have an angled face on one side and a non-angled on the other. You want the flattest sides toward gripping this. See this? So what you do is you adjust the slide in or out. Never finish by, finish by tightening in. Tighten in more than you need, then back out. Otherwise, when you tighten the second set screw against it, it will jam. So you'll, you'll push it in with both set screws in as far as you're going to go. Pull your wrench out till it's only doing the outer one and lock the two together. Now here's what often happens with older slides, and this one doesn't seem to have a problem here. See this edge right here? One of two things. Either it'll wear and this, this inner part will become angled and when you squeeze it together it kicks the back of the, the gib out and messes up your lock. Or another thing is sometimes when they sh they're shimmed, you, you have to shim this side of them, shim the inside rather than the working side. What'll happen is the new shim won't come in just right and it'll kick it out. And you got to be really careful with that when you're rebuilding them. And if I were in the shop, I would pull out the um, mineral spirits, dotted solvents, whatever you're going to use, and I'd clean it.
Again, you've got scraping. You can see up in this area, your scraping is getting weak. Over here, it's still pretty, pretty good. It's weak here, but it's pretty good. Here, it's, it's getting close to gone. And you can see that down in the bottom there, it's pretty good back in the back section here. This What's is a, your indication that it needs to be rebuilt? Rebuilt. Um, your indication is when you're tight on one end and loose on another. This is a long ways from that point, even with that wear. But when they're, a lot of times we get them there like a ten thousandths groove down the, from, from where. I mean, they really get used hard. And, and what happens is most of the time you're using it on metal work and you're only using an inch and a half of it. Well, it's probably still good for you. You don't worry too much about it. Um, for ornamental turning, we want to go three inches and we don't want any slop because every time there's slop and you turn the crank, it goes zit, 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 and you end up with a mess all the way down your work. Well, that's, that's another lecture completely. but. Essentially, the short answer to that is what you have to do is resurface everything. Um, we, we'll, we would grind it, scrape it, grind it and scrape it, fit it all together. Pretty intense process. Okay. This slide isn't that dirty, you know, people. People um, think good things are happening inside of there. They're not. What's that? Well, I think this is Vactra 2, mobile Vactra 2, um, whey oil. A lot of people don't like this because it has potash and a couple of other things in there that allow it to varnish. So if you're only an occasional user, you might just as well be off with be well off with um, a synthetic lube like Super Lube. We'll put the give in afterward. Now, one thing Gorse did, he didn't like cleaning his slide. So what he'd do, this is a nut here. Right here is a nut, a lead screw nut. Lead screw hooks into there. But right here is another nut that's it's buried inside of here. So there are two nuts, this nut and that nut. This nut is adjustable in and out, so you can back off against your lead screw and take a backlash. You can have a very, very minimal backlash with a conventional lead screw. Uh, what Gorst would do, though, is he would take out the anti-backlash nut just because he'd rather let dirt compact in there. He says, you know, um, Blackwood's nasty stuff, you just take the nut out and it's fine. Well, I'm not going to argue with the old man. He's not around to defend himself. But I like two nuts. I'd recommend cleaning before you need to do that. So what we'll do then, now, can you see what I'm doing? Almost. This over here again. That better?
And I wouldn't be afraid to use scotch Brite on that either. Whoa, dummy. I gotta put this uh, set screw in with the, yeah. Um, I do like what I can reach pretty often, you know, like what you can reach every couple times you use the lathe, you know, wipe it out, re-oil it. But taking it down and cleaning it, only when it gets sticky, when it's bothering you. And so you, we have to have that set screw in there. You see how that's going in? There it goes. You see it? One set screw. And it is. It is, yeah. Carry it until the spot there comes in for the second one. We'll put the second one in. There's still a good amount of crud in those threads because we, they, they, we didn't have any liquid to flush it out. I'd rather do it on this old cruddy one than the brand new one in there, you know. Everything always goes well with the brand new one. You don't really want that in a demo. You never want things to go well. Okay, we'll go make sure you get through both. Well, not going in very easy. There's crud in there. But we're not going to have time to clean it out. No, it's not cross-threaded. There's, there's junk in the threads. And I can't, I have no air or... Yeah, there's nothing to blow it out. Usually it goes in like... Smooth as silk. Like I said, if yours did this at home, I would recommend you uh, taking it back apart, getting out the mineral spirits, flushing it out, and cleaning it. And then we'll back off a little bit. It always end by backing out. Now lock it by just barely penetrating. Now, somebody noticed the other day that if you take on this slide and you loosen this, the collar won't turn. So I'll explain to you why that is. Well, I guess it got to work this way. You one set screw, and I usually loosen the set screw, and I tighten it back up, make sure it's tight. Take this nut right here, and loosen it. That's tightening it, I'm working backwards. Okay, now that that's loose, I'll go ahead and take this loose, and actually I'll show you what kind of set screw is in here. You don't have to back it all the way out, but it's a Yep. And if you don't have to, it will come loose inevitably. Now, this unscrews. This comes off. And the reason why this is locking up is you see this 
this distance from here. What's happening is when you tighten this down, this does not stick out farther than, let me point to the, this surface sticks out farther than this surface. So whenever you lock the screw down, it, it jams this and you can't use it. So what you have to do, and why, the, why this thing didn't work right, I don't know, because it's never been fooled with. But you have to put this, this white thing in the lathe and turn it and take this little, take a few thou off of this surface here. That's, that's about the only way I know to fix it. You could shim it out as well, but then the, you, know, you could put shims around um, this surface here. And a lot of them you get off of eBay are bad. I'll just that's the only word for it, bad. You just got to you just have to recut them. There are two bearings in here. Originally they come single shielded and they're matched pairs. And what happens is when this collar gets screwed down on them, they face up and they preload. So if you buy aftermarket bearings, you're probably not going to get the single shields pre, you know, matched pairs. You're going to have to put shims between the two bearings on the inner race to push the inner races out till you preload it, till there's no backlash. That's, that's another common thing on eBay, that the, the bearings are screwed up. Now, these bearings, when they come in old, you've got to clean them. The best thing we found yet is um, mineral spirits or something like that in the ultrasonic cleaner. But what will happen to you, and it happens a lot, is you'll clean them out, they'll feel great, they'll feel like the best bearing in the world, and a month later it feels like there's gravel in it because all the little grease that's been dried in the corners you're reactivating and it's falling apart like pebbles falling down in there. And that happens more often than not on the ones from eBay. So. I mean, the bearings in there, it's just nothing more than a couple of bearings. It's very simple. Got a rubber handle here. This one still has its these pins. There are a couple of dowels right here, and there's one one on the corresponding side. So it doesn't always come straight off with the when they have dowels. I'm gonna slide this down a little bit if I can. <clears throat> Gibbs pretty tight. And the rubber handle ought to be all right. Maybe not. Dead blow would be a better option. Don't recommend sticking a screwdriver between there and doing that. See, the lead screw just goes right in there. We need those bearings to be a normal routine thing for us. Um, I, I would say you do it when you need to. Do it when you need to. If you don't have any reason to, why bother? I mean, some of us use the things every day, and it's a lot more often, and other people don't use them much at all. You know, if you never use a slide, you don't have to clean it at all. It's never going to wear out. And you don't need it to be part of your routine. 
if you're using it every day, it's going to be a more normal part. When it comes down to the same thing, you usually do what you need to do to get the job done. Back that out as far as it'll go. And put the two screws back. Get yourself a bottle brush and go at it. It's a good idea. Take the but, out or not? Well, you don't. Yeah, it depends. If you if you're good at adjusting them and you're you're happy with where they are, you may you may think twice about that. Yeah. Brush and fall. Yeah, and again, it's that it comes. You get something off of eBay. They. They usually come in pretty nasty, even if they clean the outside up. Sometimes they take them down to the car wash and run them through the car wash. And that, that's a legitimate thing to do, but you need to treat them really well after that. And most of the time, people don't do that part of it. So there's no way I can fix this collar today. What I can show you. Is. This set screw here, what happens with that, you loosen that and this collar comes loose. So while we're putting the handle on, we're going to leave the collar down a little ways. Because that's like a final adjustment when you're putting the handles on. Put some oil in here. Make sure these spin on each other nicely. Now, on this, you see that little plastic piece? That's your, that's your friction lock for uh, setting, the, setting the dial. It's irrelevant here, like I said, because this, this, ha this collar has to be turned down. For the life of me, I cannot figure out why, I'll, unless it was like that from the factory or something, why in the world that would ever change. Uh, if you were going to sand it, you would want to take a pretty good micrometer okay. and measure it all the way around and then keep checking because you're only going to take down, I don't think I've ever taken down more than five or six thousandths, but if you're over on your granite block with that thing in your hand, you'll, you'll, you'll make a wedge out of it pretty quick. You know, some people would make a wedge out of it, some people wouldn't make a wedge out of it, but Woe to the guy that doesn't know the difference. What's that? Yeah, but again, you got to check. You got to check. I mean, it, it, uh, most of us would, if we if we were stuck with no lathe and we had to do that, we'd go over and measure it. And oh, I took a little too much off that side. I go to the other side, and I just make sure I went down flat with it. Plastic was original, and on the newer ones we usually use brass because we don't have that piece of plastic. See the hole in the lead screw at the end here? That's what you got to align the set screw from the handle up with. That's what keeps it from going any direction, or every direction. <coughs> Scott, you got to go, or are you just bored? All right. See you soon. See you, Jim. <laughs> See you, John. 
Jeez, now the party starts. Thanks for everything, John. Yep. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm tightening the 9 16 nut. Can you see that? My wrench? You want to get that pretty good. And what you're going to do is this back collar that we left loose. And you want, yeah, you want as little space there as possible so that this doesn't rub. this off up here for a minute. Bottom works the same way. Except the safety. The safety is down here in this hole. A lot of times on the machine, all I'll do is I'll loosen this. Now let's put it back on this. More stability. Always clean your bed before you put stuff on it. Safety goes up to get the handle out enough, back down. Most of the ones you get off of eBay don't have the safety on them. You know, I can pull this completely out. What I usually won't completely take it down on the lathe. I mean, this kind of cleaning we do pretty regularly. Slide the thing off. Sometimes I put um, super lube grease on it. Sometimes I put whey oil on it. Sometimes I put whatever oil is laying there on it. I really like super lube's products. Yeah, it's a synthetic oil, yep. You can see it, but you can see where the scraping is dying out on this slide. You can see you have a little bit left here, but it fades out on both ends. That goes for both sides. It's hard to focus on that. But there's barely, barely some left right in this area on this end. It's through here. Down here is pretty thin and worn. And like I said, that's that's one of the best I've ever gotten off of eBay in as found condition. Once in a while something really pristine comes up, but usually the price goes crazy.
All right. I got to get it. Okay. This is the safety. You see that little notch in the handle there? That's supposed to go down against the safety and that won't allow it to come, come up and off your lathe. Yeah, I can't get it back on. Well, just the, with the safety down, it's loose. I can slide it, but it won't come off. Tip the safety and it comes right off. That's the purpose of that. How hard you tighten this, how hard this snaps in, is set by this right here. This is a cam. The nut is a cam lock, so you can change the setting of the cam so it's tighter or looser, and then lock it in place with the lock nut. There's the clamp. If you're missing this handle, this handle is like $4 in MSC. You usually got to make this part. But the tricky thing here is it isn't just screwed in there. There's a long, it actually is supported with a quarter inch stud all the way up through there. Um, right here, you see this and this. They have corresponding lock screws. Corresponding lock screws here and down here. So you, you unlock it and then you can move it in and out. And the, what you do that for, you don't do that unless you know what you're doing and you have a problem. What those do is it sets the slide like this so you can coordinate it with your faceplate and zero it out. That's what that's for. Um, you need a good faceplate or know that your headstock is really straight on your lathe. And sometimes that's all you have is the headstock. So you go ahead and use what you got. This, this handle here comes off the same way. Well, it looks like this. Um, handle is loose. The handle is loose. I want to see where, where the hole is and inspect it for damage. No, it's all right. Set the uh, gib sets the same way through the end of the bottom slide. So it sets the same way at the top. Put the handle down tight. This um, the bottom ring runs, our bearings run really smooth yet. Very, very smooth. Second set screw, lock it in. Now uh, let's see what we got going on. Right now what I have is it's going in nicely against the um, inner or the outer nut here. It is not matching up on the inner nut. <clears throat> Why it did that, I can't begin to tell you, but stuff like that happens all the time. And Coming in, when it hits that inner nut, it's done. So maybe the inner nut is not tight.
make sure this is tight, this is the inner nut, and that's exactly what it is. You see that? It was as loose as loose can get. Now, I don't have, I don't have the right thing here. I should have had a punch. A brass punch. See if I can do it the evil way. May not get it. Okay, so I've loosened the jam nut and I moved the regular nut, and we'll see if we can. Somebody should really make spanner wrenches for that. We've um, we had them, one guy made them, but he made them out of soft material. And they lasted about three slides. It's got to be harder, harder material. If you got a good drawing, you could put it in the water jet. Make one for all of us for about $3 a set, I think. What you gotta do is keep adjusting the inner, the, the outer nut till the inner nut will grab and run smooth. There we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this up a bit because it's really Loosen the gib here. So that I'm not fighting, my gib isn't fighting what I'm trying to do with the lead screw. Because you'll, you'll feel tautness in the gib and you'll think it's in the lead screw and it's not. So I back the gib off pretty well. Do you guys see that? When you're upside down, don't forget that safety. You'll bend it. You'll bend it real fast. A lot of times when I'm setting the nut, I want to go way up in here because that's the tightest spot on the lead screw. It never gets used. So if you set your backlash there, what's acceptable on the backlash? Um, in the closest spot, I'd say one or two is about as good as you get. Um, usually, there's not much more wear than ten thousandths. I've never seen a lead screw worn more than ten thousandths. This is set pretty tight. I'm going to loosen it up. What would you expect from a brand new screw at night? What's that? What would you expect out of a brand new screw at night? Backlash. Next to zero. Next to zero. Um, 
really what I usually have is two, two pieces and one holds the brass in the middle and the other one for the jam nut. Now I'll go back and set my gib. My SD card might go up here. Back, back in till it's tight. Back out till you like it. Lock in your set screw. Dialing in is another process. I actually have a, an alignment document on that that Brian Clary did with me. zones to sell you stuff. I mean, I believe Gossager sells the white thing for like 45 or 50 bucks. That's one of the inexpensive parts on it. I don't know if they sell the protractors and I'd have never needed one. We're about to need a bunch of the red, uh, the white ones. Is there a trick to doing what you're doing? Now? Oh yeah, there's a trick. You gotta hold your tongue right. You have to align those holes up with those pins. I you have to put the. Uh, you know, one, one trick is is don't do it on a flopsy table at a hotel. That's 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 a big clue right there. We have to line them up before you put it on, which I'm not sure I did that. Keeper screw in. Don't discard those, you'll regret it because eventually you will um, have trouble pulling that with that cam coming out on you when you're tightening and loosening and stuff. Are there any source for new cams? Um, on my slides, the Well, I sent you a new one since then. I'll have to send you a new one. Because I got it, and you're the one you, I thought you sent it back to me. And it was boogered up, you said, and I put it in someone else's and sent it out. <laughs> I didn't find anything wrong with it. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> I thought I'd sent you another one. Where, where are we here? We're about 45 minutes? Yeah. Any questions? I have a document on aligning it on the lathe. And that's, I find that's pretty helpful. You don't really need to go crazy aligning unless you have something you really, really need to have aligned well. You know, in Gishe, I would say like 90% of the time you don't have to align that much. And then, but when you do, it's very, very, very critical.